It's a beautiful time of year here in the Northeast. It's the beginning of fall, and I find that there are so many beautiful metaphors in nature and the cyclical changes of the season that can help us really process and observe relational dynamics in our life in a really healthy and, and hopefully healing way. And what I want to share today is uh, how I have seen the uh, process of sister gardening or companion planting as a way of looking at the mother-daughter wound in a healthy and, and ideally healing way. And so I want to share first a children's book that actually is probably the the best representation of this that I've seen, not specifically related to the mother-daughter wound, but um, what it means, this, this companion planting or sister gardening. Um, and here's the book. I will link below the details about it. It's beautifully written. The illustrations are just breathtaking. Um, and it's really the only children's book that I've personally purchased. We get a lot of gifts of books for our kids and donations and hand-me-downs. And I just felt like this was one I really wanted in our collection. So I'll, I'll link the, the description to that below. Um, but companion planting or sister gardening is something that developed um, within the Native American communities, particularly in the Iroquois community. And it's the integrated planting in the same um, sort of gardening beds of three specific crops that are very common um, that we see this time of year, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere. That's corn, beans, and squash. And the reason why the Native American communities that grew these crops grew them together was because they create this symbiotic relationship that promotes the mutual thriving and growth of each of those individual crops. So the corn, um, if you can imagine, is this tall stalk-like plant that provides shade um, for the, the growth of the other crops below. And then the bean is this sort of spiraling um, vine kind of plant that actually winds up and around the corn stalk and reinforces the structure of the stalk. And then you have the squash below, which is a ground growing more wide and spreading crop that um, is shaded by the other two crops. And then also creates a um, more fertile ground because it allows the water and moisture to stay in the ground and then, then nourish the other crops that are growing above it. And so it's an incredible example of symbiotic relationship within nature, but I think it also really reflects elements of the mother-daughter conflict and the mother-daughter wound that's really prevalent in today's generational dynamics. Um, so you have a lot of difference between particularly older women, baby boomer women, and younger adult women who are now sort of at the prime of their lives career-wise, raising families, um, typically in the younger Gen X or millennial de um, generation. So the, if you, if you will, the soil um, that was what these two generations were raised in, in terms of their cultural understandings and expectations of the, the role of women in society, were very different. And in some ways, a lot of the conflict between those two generations is that the actual soil that they were grown in and raised in is remarkably different in a way that pits these two women and these generations against each other, because really they're coming to their lives from a different perspective and different narrative. And what this companion planting and sister gardening really illustrates is that you can actually be part of a system in which you are being nourished in different uh, sort of soil structures, if you will, but that in recognizing those different contexts and different narratives, you can still grow side by side in a way that is authentic to one's own self and promotes thriving in the unique ways that each of those generations may view sort of women's choices and women's roles. So I love the illustration of the corn and the bean and the stalk, each mutually supporting one another in their growth process, but not trying to impose upon the other uh, sort of a one-way path. Each of those crops have uh, sort of a different internal structure, a different DNA, a different um, way of expressing themselves in that same soil, in that same sort of society, um, and not expecting those three crops to perform, to act, to relate to one another 
in the same way is a really important lens through which to understand healing and understanding between conflicting generations of women. Um, so it's a little bit idealized. I, I definitely offer that. Um, I think the unique dynamics between intergenerational women really need to be looked at in a case-by-case -case basis based on the narratives that each of those women have had in their lives. And it's really important to look at the three-generation um, sort of matrix there because any of our experiences and narratives that we've absorbed do not happen in a vacuum. Um, and as the work of Rashka Hasseldine and the intergenerational puzzle of uh, women's relationships really illustrates that this is a three-generation puzzle, that the more we can understand the um, societal structure and sort of the soil in which the different generations of women were raised and sort of educated in or the social narratives that they absorbed, the more we can understand how and why that's being projected onto future generations in unhealthy ways. Um, so I think I'll close here with reflection that I wrote um, based on this, this three-generation model um, through the lens of uh, companion planting and sister gardening. Again, it's, it's a little bit um, <laughs> utopian, I think, but I think it gives us a really beautiful illustration of what's possible with these um, really escalating conflicts between generations of women. So I call this the three sisters. <clears throat> three sisters grown from the land, the sustainers, they are called by the great Iroquois nation. They are corn, bean, and squash. Providing for their people, not each on their own, but as an integrated system of nourishment, mutual support, and an interdependent relationship. Let us welcome them. Sister Corn stands tall and proud, overseeing the cropland. With her sturdy stalks and rustling leaves, she's confident in her calling as she energizes her people. With plenty of her food that lasts year-round, yet she maintains humility as she knows she cannot do this alone. Alongside her is Sister Bean, youthful and adventurous as she climbs the giant corn stalk. With her spiraling vines, she reaches around to support her sister corn. She's ever mindful of building a relationship, clinging to her sister so they both can reach for the sun. And down below, Sister Bean adds nutrients to the soil, a hidden blessing to all that grows within. And here along the earth, we find Sister Squash. Becoming restful with age and longing to share her wisdom, she lays along the earth and reaches out her arms, providing shade over the soil. She keeps rainwater in the ground, which feeds the roots of her other sisters. She is patient and intentional in her movement, knowing that she too plays an essential part in this crop of family. We thank you three sisters, corn, bean, and squash, because you teach us how to nurture one another in love. You remind us that we each have gifts that we bring to build community, to live together in peace, and to create balance and equality within our ever-changing world.